Christy Lu Stout is in Hong Kong with more on the numbers. And uh, Christy, China's zero COVID policy being tested as the economy slows and, and now Beijing getting its first local Omicron case. That's right. Omicron has breached the Chinese capital. Beijing has reported its very first locally transmitted case of the highly infectious variant just weeks before the Beijing Winter Olympic Games. And the total number of Omicron cases across China, that remains unclear. But local cases of the variant have been detected in at least eight cities, including Dalian in the northeast to Shenzhen in the south. Now, China, meanwhile, has posted its weakest GDP growth in a year and a half. Its fourth quarter GDP report is out, posting about 4 percent growth. And that is in sharp contrast to what China experienced in the first half of last year, when it had that really sharp upward rebound from its initial pandemic slump. Right now, China is counting the cost of two things. You have its ongoing uh, property slump, as well as the cost of its zero COVID policy. Look, in many ways, zero COVID has been a success in China, as we've discussed many times here. It has saved lives. It had curbed you know, massive outbreaks. But it has come at a very steep cost. 20 million people across China are under strict lockdown. And when you talk to economists, they point out the costs of those lockdowns, saying that domestic consumption is being particularly hit hard. I want to bring up a pick quote for you. I talked earlier today to an economist, a senior economist of Oxford Economics, Tommy Wu, and he told me this, quote, that the zero COVID approach affects consumption, especially demand for services. He went on to say, from an economic perspective, it's better to have some sort of easing in restrictions, but we know the reality is that zero tolerance will be very likely stay until the end of this year, the earliest, unquote. Now, earlier, Goldman Sachs slashed its projection for economic growth for China. It's now down to 4.3 percent for the year. Eurasia earlier marked China's zero COVID policy at the very top of its list of global risks for 2022. Back to you. Wow. And, and uh, Chris, before we let you go, I mean, uh, Chinese leaders, they're saying they're going to uh, support the nation's slowing economy. But how? Well, analysts and economists that we've been talking to are saying that they have this expectation. It's widely expected that Chinese officials will step in to help shore up this slowing economy through a number of measures. You have tax cuts, an increase in infrastructure spending, as well as fiscal measures like speeding up the issuances of local bonds. And there is a lot at stake here, especially this year. Later this year, we're going to see Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, secure that unprecedented third term as the head not only of the Chinese Communist Party, the military, as well as the Chinese government. Michael. Yeah, yeah. Um, a great wrap-up there, Christy Lou Stout. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. You got it. Thank you.